Good morning, everyone. You're welcome back to today's class. So I'll be treating calculus for today. Um, basically, this is a very important aspect of mathematics and it's very intriguing. Calculus is the study, or rather it is the mathematics of motion and change. Let me write that down. It is a study of motion and change. That's what calculus is all about. So basically, the mathematics of change is called calculus. Now, each time we discuss about motion and change in science or in any other field, we would use calculus. Now, mind you, calculus is a very important aspect in the mathematics sciences and every other course, even in the life sciences, because we generally use it a lot, a lot. Now, this very um, topic is divided into two. Basically, it could be three, divided into differential calculus, differential calculus. It's also into integral calculus. And it also limits functions and continuity. <clears throat> so um, let me basically, let me start from stating functions. Now, please, um, calculus is very, very interesting and um, it will benefit you not just intellectually but professionally it would help you a lot so i advise you to do the following for you to learn calculus it's a, it's a slow process it's step by step so you have to follow due procedures to learn it to master it it's not like um algebra where you use numbers when you manipulate structures calculus is just different so you have to become slow learn each of the steps, do your assignments, follow my videos, read test books, and be patient. You will learn calculus. Okay, so basically, basically, functions. I believe in one way or the other, we've heard about, um, you've heard about f of x, you've heard about a of X, A of arrow, and all of the rest. So let us look at it this way. Basically, in life, things depend on each other. Things depend on each other. So two things basically depend. It's possible. The area of a circle, the area of a circle is dependent on its radius. Yeah, that's true. The area of a circle is dependent on the radius. So somebody can say, the area is equal to, let me say, f of r. It's possible. You can do that. The area is dependent on what? f of what? r. So somebody can say area is a function of radius. That's the meaning. Somebody can say area is a function of the radius. Now see, a here, remember I said a depends on what? The radius. So this a is called a dependent variable. It's called a dependent variable. Why R itself is the independent, independent variable. Variable. Now, same thing applies when we have something like Y equal F of X. Same thing applies. Y is the independent variable. Sorry, Y is the dependent variable. Y X is independent. So over here, Y is a function of what? X. Now, basically, we have so many functions. So many things depend on um, the other to produce something else. So what does F do? F is simply F, let me put F this way. If this be F, we have an input 
and definitely we're going to have an output. So if f is the name of a function, if f is the name of something, then we impute x into f. If we impute x into f, our result will become f of x. So what this f of s means is the value of f at x. So many a times you would have seen mathematical expressions written as f brackets, let me say 3. What it means is, what is f at 3? That's the meaning. So if you should compare this with f of x, it therefore means that s is 3, which is same thing as saying, if the input is 3, you are inputting 3 into this f, we're going to have f of what? 3 as our result. So definitely, I've just explained some few things here. I've explained what functions are, what the dependent and independent variable are, and how to locate them. So if we have a here equal to something, that thing is equal to each of the variable there, or the variable is being defined with, is called the independent variable. So if I say something like this, y is equal s squared plus 2x plus 7. This very thing here, y is dependent on x. Because everything here is being defined by x. Mind you, even 7 is defined by x. And what would 7 be? x to the power of what? 0. Remember that anything to the power of 0 is what? 1. So 1 times 7 is still what? 7. So the value does not change. So y is what? Dependent. x is what? Independent. Okay. So let me, let me take um, a question on this. It could just look like a polynomial question. Let us say y is equal um, f of x, which is equal 2x squared plus 4x minus 3. Then we're asked to find f of minus 2. Imagine a question like this. y is equal f of x, which is equal to this. We're asked to find f of minus 2. So first of all, we've been told that f of my uh, sorry, f of x is equal to x squared plus 4x minus 3. So what would then become f of minus 2? Simply put, that x would then become minus 2. So this would then become 2 bracket minus 2 squared plus 4 bracket minus 2, then minus 3. Now this will become 2 bracket minus 2 squared means minus 2 times minus 2. And that will give me plus 4. Then plus times minus here will give me minus. 4 times 2 will give me 8. Then minus 3. 2 times 4 is 8. Minus 8. Minus 3. Final answer here will give me minus 3. So for this very um, evaluation, I'm just trying to tell you that when you see f of x, and you're asked to evaluate f of something. What it simply means is, what would be the value of this very x? What would be the value of f at x equal minus 2? That's the meaning. Now, we're going to see more examples on this. Basically, to solve questions like this, we're going to see it in polynomials majorly. So for the now, let me just do just an introduction to what calculus is all about. So in the next video, I'll be treating differentiation or differential calculus. Please subscribe to this channel and tell your friends about it. Thank you very much.